Um, you know, I, I think why, why we like movies and TV shows so much mm-hmm. is for um, storytelling, at least for me. Yeah. Acting. Um, and when it comes to like a, telling a good story, I think you have so much more creative freedom with a video game. Yeah. It's interactive and which one is being interactive amplifies the user's experience mm-hmm. so much more. And then you also have, you know, in a movie, I mean, you really have to reach a, a bigger audience. You have like max like three hours and that's pushing it, mm-hmm. you know, for most yeah. people, unless you already have such a big audience, like, you know, like Avatar, mm-hmm. they could get away with the like, 315 runtime you know but most people aren't gonna sit down and watch the irishman that's like three and a half hours long uh, yeah or like in game could get away with being three hours long mm-hmm. the batman those are all really big demographics but like most people don't want to watch a movie that's that long that's like most people yeah in a video game you have so much longer to tell a story you know um both the most recent, you know, God of War PS4 and then God of War Ragnarok are both like the campaign is mm-hmm. like 24, 26 hours long. Wow. And then, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2 is like a 60 hour campaign. Mm-hmm. And those are just wonderful stories being told. And it's because, yeah, it, I think one of the biggest benefits to a video game is you have that much more time to tell the story. Yeah. So, mm. So is it kind of similar to, would you say it's similar to television in that way? Or or is, or is are there similarities kind of stopping and ending at just longer runtime, basically? It's similar to television. Mm-hmm. Because like we have like The Last of Us show right now. Mm-hmm. I just think it's how is the show going to utilize its time? Yeah. Is it going to follow this hmm game more closely or is it going to try and reach a bigger audience like i think what the last of us is doing is everything all the changes they've made Mm -hmm. have been very smart because i think with where the um where that game falls short i've only played the first one i need to play the second one but the gameplay does get very repetitive Mm mm-hmm and I find to get from point A to point B in like the missions in between cutscenes, you're doing pretty much the same thing, you know. Yeah. Solve a puzzle, which is usually just finding a ladder, and then shooting the infected, mm-hmm. and then you get to the story, which is really really good. And where have have you seen any of the TV show? I haven't seen any of the TV show, and I haven't played the games. So. Well, what what the TV show is doing really well. Is it's, like, it's expanding on the story to kind of fill those gaps where you would normally just be walking and like shooting mm-hmm. infected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> to get through the game. Hmm. So, hmm. so if, and then, I mean, like a regular TV show that's not an adaptation, mm-hmm. you have more time to delve into characters like you would a video game. But I feel like a video game does get to ride on its interactiveness. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And it's not just, I feel like a a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, it's not, Mm -hmm. I mean, and even like God of War, I don't feel like it ever really gets super repetitive. It's always like new material. Yeah. I feel like a TV show that gets to run for a while, whether it be like a sitcom or like a cop drama Mm -hmm. or, or anything, it's kind of the same stuff every episode. Yeah. And hardly ever do you find a really good long-running TV show that there's something new coming up frequently. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, there is like, there are so many different, um, obviously like kinds of video games and genres of video games and like the level of ability to be interacted with as far as its mechanics its Mm -hmm. world its story it varies so greatly like there's a lot like mm, 
I don't know. With God of War, um, I know we talked about this a long time ago. One of the things I love so much about it uh, that made it feel very interactive, but also like kind of like you're just playing out a movie, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense, is uh, that there's no breaks to the 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 point of view of the well there's no breaks in the camera yeah like there's no cuts yeah so it's always third person so you're like you know uh piloting kratos in that way while you're in the world and whenever a scene scene happens that you have no control over it's like the camera kind of just like it's like omnipresent omnipresent this this like thing that's kind of just observing it switches to just like kind of like it's uh, there's no cut to the scene. It just starts happening and it goes from third person to moving and looking at things. And it's basically the same as watching a movie that's like one shot, unbroken. Mm-hmm. You know, Birdman, 1917. 17. Uh, and so that feeling made it very cinematic. It reminded me of those movies, but it also made it so much more... Um, compelling as a video game as well it's really cool how it like kind of tapped into both of those things uh because i mean even with with red dead i mean you you're in your third person view you're controlling but then when a scene comes on there is a camera cut to what is happening that yeah. oh you know they both have scenes that have you know portions where it's basically just stage and you have no c- control over it but the fact that god of war doesn't cut kind of uh, it gives it a level of immersion that other games that cut, you know, you may not feel as well. I mean, it's kind of subjective, right. the level of immersion. For me, it really worked. Like, it was so much more immersive than most other games I had played for that reason. And there's a lot of games that do that that aren't heavy story-driven games. Like, a lot of uh, older platforming games. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just how they worked, too, where they, you know, the camera never broke. Yeah. Uh, from the position even though scenes were happening so it's not necessarily like they entirely did something new but they kind of made it feel the most like one of those movies than any other game has as far as i've played i haven't played a lot of games but i know i, I think god of war does that better like mm-hmm. um the ps4 spider-man does that sometimes yeah sometimes well, sometimes yeah but no god of war it is just pretty much one cut and you walk into mm-hmm. a room and then you get in a cutscene and the camera just like goes from the third person perspective. It just kind of wraps around instead of like a harsh cut from third person. Exactly. Like watching a cutscene. Yeah. And then sometimes it does it too well Uh to where you're watching a cutscene and like you get attacked by someone. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, there's my health bar. I'm playing now. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I love that feeling of some fight or something happening and you don't know if you have control over or not so like there were a lot of scenes where i was like pressing buttons like can i do something and And then there were other times where it was just felt like i was watching something and it like was really awkward because they're just standing there i'm like oh i need to be oh no i gotta pick up my controller yeah exactly and yeah i mean we're we're mostly talking about story-based games i mean there's Mm -hmm. a lot of games that have different mechanics like shooters or just Mm straight-up puzzle games but yeah i feel like we're just focusing on story-based right now even even kind of more like other types of games, the storytelling aspect is like so interesting and different from film and television. Uh, the one that comes to mind that I really love, played it as a kid, and uh, kind of made me start to think about the player's experience as opposed to the watcher's experience of like storytelling is Halo. Oh, yeah. I, how much of Halo have you played? Like, I've played the Master Chief Collection. The whole thing? Yeah, so I played like one, yeah, two, yeah. three, and four. Yeah, that's that's all I was gonna talk about. So mm-hmm. like those games, uh, I don't know if I necessarily realized it in the moment. I think I kind of maybe did subconsciously. I definitely engaged with this concept, but I didn't realize it until very recently how like kind of cool and profound that those games are mm-hmm. because, um, basically the character you pilot, the Master Chief, he is. Uh, he's not fleshed out a whole lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's He's got some lines. It's mostly just like one-liners. It's just like... Yeah. Uh, he So he doesn't say much. He doesn't necessarily do much. You don't see a lot of his backstory and like the little bits you get are kind of just like explaining 
why he could do what he can do. It's it's not really fleshed out. And mm-hmm. so what what I realize is really cool and special about that is that the player playing the Master Chief is basically in charge of like what kind of person he is and like who he is based on how you act. Yeah. Right. And other games tackle that with like literal mechanics. Like as far as like you mean like choose your own adventure? Kind of where you can choose either like kind of dark path or light path as far as helping people or not helping people oh, like red dead yeah. has it as well a lot of games have like that honor concept system. and then there's, honor there's system. some games that like that's the point of the game yes like yes. detroit or mm-hmm. um, until dawn yeah but halo doesn't have that it doesn't have any specific mechanic for that but as far as storytelling goes mm-hmm. you basically engage with the same concept as far as kind of like you feel cool and you're fully in control of like how you fight and how you kill things and if you save people or not but there's no uh there's nothing like compelling you to go one way or the another you're just in it and so you kind of choose it's kind of bringing out just like what kind of person you are kind of and then you it's like that connection between like the main character and you uh like kind of seeing yourself or just like uh seeing yourself as the main character it's like it's like one of the most one of the most visceral kind of experiences i think i ever had with it because it was so limitless um because it was so simple Mm -hmm. all he did was one-liners and what they did later in later games is they started to like actually give him a backstory and flesh him out and that's that's cool like if you wanted to see that but uh then it loses its what made it unique you know what i mean i completely agree with 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 what you said about um it puts the player definitely in his shoes Mm -hmm. because you're kind of learning the world Mm -hmm. kind of at the same time he is Mm -hmm. i mean uh because i I forget exactly i mean master chief is what a a spartan Mm -hmm. right yeah what they're called yep and um and the fact that he doesn't really have an identity Mm -hmm. makes him super relatable Based mm-hmm. on the choices you make, exactly the um, the events that he's put through. Mm-hmm. So, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel like that works in all games, mm-hmm. but like um, like Elden Ring, like your character doesn't really have too much dialogue at all. Yeah, and it's just kind of a grinding game, and I feel like I don't really mm-hmm. relate to my character at all. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Because you know it's not you know it's an RPG. Yeah, and so. I feel like because it is an RPG, I should relate to my character more. Yeah. Maybe it just didn't, maybe it just didn't settle with me, but there are games where you get a full backstory of the character mm. and I also relate to them really well. So I just feel like it's an execution. I like where you're kind of a, um, like a ghost kind of character. You don't have a backstory and I'm able to put myself into it and really mm-hmm. relate. Um, and I feel like Halo does that really well. Yeah. I guess when I said visceral, as far as like how Halo feels, it's kind of like, it's almost like waking up in a dream. Mm-hmm. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and being able to relate to characters that are like specifically written a certain way, even if they're written to be more universal or they're written to be very specific, either of those people can relate to. And even if you can't relate yourself, you can you know you can see other people you know within another character. Like, there's so many ways to get people. There's there's so many ways you can get into a story. Uh, But I, yeah, like I didn't realize it until you were kind of distinguishing it, but Halo is definitely like, there is a massive thing happening, a massive story sprawling Mm -hmm. so much rich, like, you know, like history and everything. And like the world is about, the universe is about to end all these like different things. And it's like, you were just thrusted in the center of it. Like, like waking up in a dream and you just like have all of this, power you mm-hmm. know what i mean because yeah. he's you know uh the backstory obviously is he's a spartan he was in a program built to be like perfect soldier they had a whole program but everyone died he's the last one there's that backstory but you don't have a whole lot of that so you're kind of just thrusted in with this power and it's like kind of everyone's relying on you and you're just like kind of like head first going into it mm-hmm. so i I guess that's what it is. I guess it's more dreamlike than a lot of other games uh, I've played. Uh, even games that are similar, like the Call of Duty games or the Battlefield games, a lot of times their uh, characters that you play as are, 
almost like as stripped down like as master chief like yeah. they don't have a whole lot of backstory a lot of them do have a ton of backstory but some of them don't have any backstory and you're just playing through their eyes and it's a similar experience but i think the the sci-fi huge exciting bombastic energy of halo makes it even more cool and dreamlike because it's right. nothing like it's like oh maybe there's like nothing relatable about it <laughs> and so like you, you're forced to put yourself there yeah to just experience it yeah and so that's how you relate to it as kind of like in a dream mm -hmm. that weird feeling is yeah. i guess what it kind of puts on you what i'm really interested to see um and it could be a similar experience is yeah. um the new hogwarts legacy game that comes out like next week oh really yeah it's coming out that soon mm -hmm. and that is supposedly the fully customizable character mm -hmm. yeah um, and so i'm interested to see and it's a big choice based game you know yeah what, what path you're going to go down um i'm interested to see how immersive that is mm -hmm. in terms of having a character that you know doesn't really have much of a backstory mm -hmm. that you kind of get to design and decide the path uh, i hope it's really great yeah i'm really i have really high hopes for that game but yeah not enough to pre-order <laughs> i'm, <just, laughs> I'm kind of scared but once it comes out and i hear the reviews are good i'll probably get it but i hope it's good me too there's a lot of non harry potter fans that are hyped for it yeah it's because a lot of people even if they're not a fan of the source material they'll be a, they're just people are so much a fan of like that concept mm -hmm. of the highly customizable like basically just like living another life kind yeah. of like you know in another environment where maybe the consequences of your choices <laughs> don't matter yeah or they aren't or they aren't they don't exist um not like it's inherently like a bad thing i'm not like saying it's like a delusional bad place to be i think it i think video games can be really good and therapeutic for a lot of different things um and especially if you need an outlet for certain things you know what i mean mm -hmm. but yeah i think my first playthrough of hogwarts legacy mm -hmm. it, i kind of go back and forth if i'm going to have a my first playthrough is going to be 100 percent as bad as you can be yeah or like try and keep it really good like like my first playthrough of red dead i had you know i like maxed out my honor the first time i played it yeah i think i did too and i that game i just i don't want to um like be a bad person in the game at all <laughs> like in red dead yeah yeah like i feel legitimately bad about it uh i was kind of that way in watchdogs i really wanted to be a good person in watchdogs but yeah that game i don't know like it's it's really just like do you kill innocent civilians or not yeah the that game's just kind of a too simple yeah it, red dead like every little side quest is so fleshed out mm -hmm. and so like telling a little story every single time yeah. so that like yeah you're like in that moment and you can feel the repercussions of like the things that happen even the little things that happen along your journey that you have no control over like yeah. when you're when you're just on a road and there's this guy changing his horse's shoes and he's like yeah. hey partner and the horse kills yeah. him and runs away yeah and you had <laughs> nothing like, to do oh, with man, that i feel awful yeah i feel awful but oh, like man, there's was, nothing you could have done i was replaying it the other day yeah and there's this guy being eaten by like a wolf. He was being attacked. Oh by my wolf. gosh. And he was like calling for me for help. But my, my horse is glitching out and he was like stuck on this rock. It was like between a rock and a tree and I, I couldn't move and it wasn't letting me get off my horse. And I just had to watch the guy just die. <laughs> and I felt so bad. And like my honor de decreased because I didn't help him. I was like, yeah, it was that experience cannot happen in a movie nope exactly that is just the the sound so of your honor weird. going down it's like or whatever it's yeah but it's not like, ouch. your fault yeah the game glitch yep like i was gonna help him the rules in which you're operating like broke temporarily mm -hmm. and like i just had traumatized to i know it was awful <laughs> it really sucked terrible. or i get that feeling too um like, oh my gosh, Detroit Become Human. Yeah. One of my favorite games. Yeah. And the first time I played it, I didn't I didn't want any walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. I was just going to 
do choices on what I thought was best and just suffer the consequences. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up um, losing one of the three main characters very early on in the game. And I I just felt so bad. Oh, my gosh. And it just, it, you know, it just cuts the game time down so much. And Oh, really? Yeah. And um, Wow. I think one of the next games I'm going to play is uh, Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot about it. Mm-hmm. I've never actually played it. And I, are are you familiar with that game at all? No, it's I don't um, think so. you play as it's like I think eight different people. You have like their oh, this sounds really familiar. Is it like, kind of like a, a horror cabin? game? Yeah, yeah, in the cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, this sounds and really familiar. Basically, either you can keep all eight of them alive. Yeah, or they can all die at the end. And, and anything so, in between? And, yeah, anything in between. Oh wow! And so I um, it's free right now. Oh like, really? Yeah. So okay, yeah, I I totally actually, I remember some big YouTuber playing it at one point now, and I saw like a clip or something. I think Markiplier played it. It was that, probably that's PewDiePie what seen, or when I saw PewDiePie. it. Yeah. Um. But just games like that, mm-hmm. yeah, I just oh, oh my gosh, I was trying to one hundred percent Detroit and like complete yeah. all the flow charts and get all the wow. trophies, which I did. Yeah. And, but I was doing a really good job, and. I had messed up this one and I was trying to get this one outcome. Yeah. And I, I guess it ended up working out because I still got a different outcome. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get um, a positive one that I hadn't got yet. And I made some mistake. I missed something. And I just got one of the most tragic cutscenes ever. Oh, man. And I, I didn't touch the game for almost a year like to really it. yeah yep yeah. because of that scene that's it. i was so saddened by my by my oh choices my gosh. and i was just like i wasn't even like playing the whole game you know start to finish i was just kind of getting trophies uh jumping to a section and doing it yeah, a different way and exactly yeah, yeah yeah and so i yeah i just had like two trophies left and i needed that one and then another one and then i would have got the platinum yeah and then yeah i messed it up and just this super sad scene. And oh I was just gosh. like, I'm just not feeling it. And yeah, wow, I didn't touch it for almost a year. <laughs> then I went back and finished it. Yeah. But yeah probably was... also just because you spent probably so much time with it. Yeah. I, I've been playing it. it a lot that week. Yeah. Um, and so. Wow. I, I think I was just, I was done. Yeah. I was yeah, tired. Yeah. And then I, I hadn't messed up at all. I was doing so good. Oh, and, wow. So it just like I cut the momentum. That one and uh, just such a tragic scene. But I was just like, man. It's towards the end of the game, too. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was really that, sad. That like hits in every way. It's tragic. It's towards the end. You were so close. You had all this momentum built up. Mm-hmm. Just in every way. Yeah. And it's something like that. You were that tired you, of it. You every can't way. get in a movie as well. Yeah. Even watching a movie multiple times. That's um, something, oh my gosh, I want to talk about. That is like, that is hitting different watching movies more than once. Because I like never really did that. Yeah. Yeah. There's another game um, called Vampire. Yeah. That I love. I play it once a year in October. Like, yeah. it's been the past three years I've played it every October. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And the first time I played it, I... I made a mistake, I guess not really a mistake. I made a choice mm-hmm. early on and I was think I was like, mm, I guess there's, I, I realized it was going to affect my, my perfect run, what they call a, um, a vegetarian run where you don't, um, eat people. And cause, cause you, wow. you, you play as a vampire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's crazy. I had, what do they call it? They call it embracing someone. Uh-huh. So I had embraced someone. Like the first person you're able to embrace. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, there's something, there's like a, a vegetarian run or like a starving run is what they call it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. But I already ate that guy. Uh, I was like, so I guess I'm just going to be the worst person I can be. Yeah. And I just embraced everyone <laughs> as quickly as I could. Yeah. And just got the worst possible outcome for the game. Oh my and God. just basically destroyed the world. Uh, that, that you're in because what's really, what I love about vampire is all of the NPCs you can interact with Mm -hmm. and they all have their own backstories and they all are able to embrace 
anyone. Um, there's not a single just like random NPC that you see once you're never going to see again. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They all have stories to tell. Uh -huh. And uh, if you, there's like four districts you play in on the map. And if you embrace enough people in a district, the district falls and it's just overrun oh, wow. by monsters and yeah. um, it just is burning. And so, yeah, I fell the whole map. The whole map. <laughs> I crumbled map? each district oh by the end gosh. of the game and got just the worst possible outcome. And then that was my first playthrough. Uh -huh. And then my past two playthroughs, I've done a vegetarian run and gone without eating anybody and mm -hmm. had the best ending possible. Yeah. So maybe... Maybe 2023, I'll, I'll do another where I eat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be your year yeah, to, right. to burn the map. Yeah, I mean, it was this last year, 2022's playthrough was tough. Uh huh. I really wanted to eat people. <laughs> because it's eating people is how you level up. So if you don't eat people, yeah. you're, the further you get in the game, just, just the, the less you progress. Oh. And so your enemies are just like 10, 15 levels higher than you by the end of the game. And so it's just, it's just, mm. it's just a lot harder. Yeah. But if you wow. eat people, then you become just insanely strong <laughs> and all the boss fights are just so easy. Anyway, I recommend that game. Not enough people have played that I game. I don't know if I've, I don't know if you've brought it up before. I don't know if I've ever heard of that. It's, it's so much fun. It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's one of those games where like the mechanics mm -hmm. are like that aspect of learning just about every single NPC. Yeah. And are you going to be a good vampire or a bad vampire? Mm -hmm. I think that was their, their start. Yeah. And then everything else kind of fell flat. Like the combat in the game mm. is just, the combat sucks. Yeah. It's not good. The graphics are not great. Yeah. It came out in like 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's not great graphics. Is it a pretty short game? Yeah, it's only like, 18 to 20 hours long. Yeah. So not too bad. Yeah. It's my, it actually might be shorter than that. Yeah. It might be like 60. Relatively short for normal video game yeah. story lengths. Like Red Dead is 60. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely felt long, but I I wouldn't take anything out. I, no, I enjoyed it the whole time. It's perfect. And it's so much more than that if you keep getting diverted from the story. Yeah. That... So it, it took a lot longer than just 60 hours for me to finish it. Yep. And it was well worth it. I'm focusing on like the challenges right now. Uh huh. Where, um, you know, either like the legendary animals or the legendary fish, mm -hmm. and then just uh, like the bandit challenges where it's like rob four stores in one day mm -hmm. or rob a train without being caught, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's hunting challenges and herbalists. So I'm doing those, and I didn't, I haven't done that on my past two runs of red dead and yeah yeah it's a lot of fun i don't think i did any challenges i definitely just more interacted with like every little side story or like mm -hmm. natural occurring event i could kind yeah. of just to really experience the world as much as i could the game's memory is insane mm -hmm. like i visit a shop in like I don't know, like uh, Armadillo. Yeah. And I don't go back to Armadillo for a long time. And I go back and the shopkeeper's like, haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, or yeah. If I go to a shop I've never been to, you know, they're like, oh, you're a new face. Uh -huh. Something like that. I Just those like little details are super cool. Yeah. Super interactive. Or there's this one guy that you can find randomly where he gets bit by a snake and you can like either give him medicine or mm -hmm. suck the venom out. But he can show up a, like multiple times. Uh-huh. And like... Um, every time I see him, he's like, I know. It's like, I got bit again. <laughs> he's like, You're helping me out again. Thank you so much. I'm a That's, dumbass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you want to talk about menu or baby driver first? Ooh. Mm, let's, let's consult the eight ball. Okay. Good idea. Are we going to talk about... Uh, baby driver first. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you do it? You hold it yeah. up like this. Yeah. What's it say? Oh. 
It keeps going on an angle. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We got it. Signs point to yes. Okay, baby driver. Baby driver. Awesome. So this is my first time watching Baby Driver. Yeah, what'd you think? Uh, I loved it. I knew I was going to love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those movies I'm into. I just... I'd heard some stuff about it before, like how uh-huh. um, he wrote the script kind of at the same time he was listening to music, like the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he built the soundtrack. I forget what it is. If he built the soundtrack before he wrote the script mm-hmm. or if he built it while he was writing the script. Yeah. And so I knew music was going to be like a big part of how the story goes. Oh, yeah. It was everything. It was integral. It was... It felt... So- yeah, mm-hmm. e- yeah. Either way, it just felt like e- exactly like um, it. It would just be weird without the music. Yeah, you know what I mean. It just yeah, it, it j- was just be another high school. It was another character in the right. story, basically. Of course, I love John Hamm and Jamie yeah. Fox. So yeah, they're awesome. Uh, you had already really liked John Hamm from John like Hamm. Uh, Mad Men, right? Oh, I love Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John Hamm from Mad Men and. Um, he plays a, like a small recurring character in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Oh, he does? And he's just hilarious in that. Oh my gosh. Um, he's a really good actor. Dude, oh, he was yeah. so good at Baby Driver. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he... Oh, he was so good. He was one of my favorite parts, for sure. He's... Every, like, I've watched movies specifically because he's in it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, he's one of those actors. I just... Yeah, I love John Hamm. He was an acting coach. Before he was an actor. Really? Yeah. He actually... So he only, like, recently got into, like, movies and shows? Yeah, I mean... Big time. I mean, yeah. t- 2000s. Like, okay, that's... He wasn't a, relatively recent. Yeah, like, one of his first, I guess, bigger jobs was... <laughs> he was in an episode of Gilmore Girls. <laughs> he was? Yeah. He looks like a baby. He's, yeah, he's really young. Yeah. Um... Of course, I don't know if you've seen that. He was on a, a dating show at one point. Um, and it's just like... The like a reality? Yeah. TV? Yeah. No and way. It's just like the craziest I didn't know that. thing ever. It's I had no so idea. Funny. That's funny. Um, and then, yeah, of course, his big break was Mad Men. Yeah. But he um, he was actually... I forget her name. The girl in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Mm-hmm. And then she was in... The office also ellie something yeah i cannot he was that. her acting coach so oh my gosh yeah that's a neat little bit of trivia oh my gosh that's sick uh, dude he um in this movie it, i always went back and forth on mm-hmm. whether he was just purely like this evil scary guy or if he's just like a dude yeah. kind of like getting by he like pl- he like had both of those dogs in him like at yeah. every moment until yeah. He went full one way or the other. Yeah, uh, I feel like, like in the beginning of the movie, he's just a dude. Yeah, he's just fine. He's yeah. just a freaking dude. He was he's just trying to make some money. He was sticking up for baby. He was just, yeah, he was just a dude. He's just making some money. I mean, made some mistakes, but he's like making the most of his situation. Or something. Then, I don't know. Um, when him and Jamie Foxx are in the restaurant. Oh yeah, and they're talking and yeah, yeah. that that scene that intense. scene so good. And then the next restaurant scene, when it's like. The frame rate's oh. slow, a little slower, yeah. and the music's going. And I'd like, seen that scene. So that's the so only good. scene I'd seen. No way. Before, yeah. Oh, that kind of sucks that it was that one that it, you had seen. Because I mean, yeah, it, it's so impactful when you haven't seen it. Like that's yeah. how when that scene came on, I was like getting chills. Like I, you know what I mean? It was so. No, I'd forgotten like what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew he was threatening, and I knew. Mm-hmm. He got shot, but I like I didn't remember how that happened. I didn't yeah. remember if the cop was going to shoot him or if Baby was going to shoot him. Or okay, okay, okay. If something was just going to happen, so like I was still shocked when Baby shot him. I was yeah. Like, oh, that's right. Oh my god, that was so good. Um, the tension in that scene was awesome. That scene was really right. good, dude. Oh, this movie's so freaking good. And, uh, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> I'd seen that clip of Kevin Spacey with the whenever the lights come on and he's like bananas. <laughs> I'd seen that in memes and stuff. Yeah, there's some memes. But from I didn't know it was from that movie until that came on. <laughs> I was like, 
Kevin Spacey was pretty awesome in this movie. Yeah, despite his he controversies. Was, he's, yeah. he's a good actor in that. <laughs> <laughs> he's an actor in a movie. Oh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, no, I was surprised that his performance was good. And that, in the end, I mean, I thought he was going to, like, try and kill baby also but yeah he's yeah um i couldn't tell when the movie was gonna end like what was gonna really? happen at the end really? like was he just gonna get away with it which i was okay with but i yeah. also felt like you know he's such a pure character that him just getting away with all that stuff is kind of weird yeah yeah exactly. and then and then he got arrested and i was like okay that makes sense yeah i was like but i'm also kind of sad because, yeah. like, you know, they're saying he's going to go away for, like, 30 years. Yeah. 25 years. I was like, oh, man, that sucks. Yeah. But then the, he got a parole, and I was like, oh, nice. Yeah, at the ending, I actually, it was, it felt a little unclear whether he actually got out or. Yeah, or he just was, that was his dream. Yeah. Of, like, getting out. Maybe, I don't know. I, I kind of took it as he was actually getting out on good behavior I because think, he already yeah. had that dream, like earlier in the movie yeah and uh, all the people were vouching for him and yeah it was a kid put it in the situation so more than likely he got out of yeah. it he got his happy ending so i i got i kind of kind of got a a question to ask you kind of like a general topic about the movie to kind of dive into mm -hmm. but basically uh one of the things that it was just like oozing and that i loved is obviously just it's uh, cohesion as far as direction is concerned mm -hmm. it's style how s it kind yeah. of like intentionally slick and like snappy and movie like it was and like i mean everything the uh like obviously the music and like the pacing the film language and the how freaking like the set and the the set design and like cohesion was like amazing. Like that opening sequence, well, like the second opening sequence, it kind of has like two opening sequences. Yeah. There's the car, uh, the getaway, and then there's like him going oh, to he's to coffee. get the coffee, and like the lyrics are on the. Oh, that was awesome! I love that, that so much. It's like like a musical. I felt like a musical. And I really think. I mean, I haven't read this anywhere, but I think, um, when the uh, baby was in West Side Story. I think that opening yeah. sequence was like one of the things that piqued Steven Spielberg to. Like, oh, try and that's him. cool. I cool. guess I yeah. would guess Ansel Elgort. Yeah, 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 I wasn't even gonna try. You weren't even gonna. I'm just wondering why <laughs> Ansel Ansel Elgort. Yeah, that home. Um, yeah, yeah. But that, that just that's just Edgar Wright's signature because mm -hmm. yeah, I love Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, and yeah. that movie does a really good job of bringing like a comic book to life. Yeah. In terms of just like some of the shots, mm -hmm. um, that like the shots just like look like comic book panels sometimes, or yeah, they have the words on the screen, mm -hmm. and so it makes sense for a movie that's more based on like music and just like a cool, slick characters, like where you said that the yeah. shots are really slick, yeah. That that scene just it looks like a music video, mm -hmm. yeah, just exactly. Kind of dancing around, and, a lot of it looks like a music video, yeah, it's just a big music video, um, but. What so I just I always loved that I loved its style, mm -hmm. I loved its delivery and its pacing and its snappiness. And it is it, it's a very well paced movie. Yeah, like everything, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, something I realized this time, and it made me love it even more, was so earlier on um, in the in the movie when he's at his house with his foster dad, mm -hmm. and they're like flipping through the channels. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it had like a bunch of scenes from movies, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't notice, I've seen it kind of three times now. I saw it a long time ago. I watched it with my wife. She liked it a lot. And then I watched it a third time by myself, uh, just recently, uh, to get ready for today. And I didn't notice it until the third viewing where when he's flipping through the channels and all of the, uh, not all of them, but some of those lines that are said, he says later in the movie and what kind of like, I got like a quick like paradigm shift in that moment is like, wait a second. He's like, he's a child. Like as far as like kind of, 
he he grew up to be like i don't know he was like really young when his mm -hmm. parents died right and so ever since then he's been uh with this uh foster dad who can't speak and he's uh been in this crime world where he doesn't want to speak yeah so like the only like talking he's ever done is like what he's learned from television yeah so i kind of like saw this movie and like it's pacing and it's slickness and it's big bigger than life uh like storytelling elements like how some of the uh like characters talk and like these lines that no one would ever say yeah. like these like alliteration all this like snappy stuff i was like wait a second is this movie basically being told from baby's perspective and he loves movies and that's the only way he knows how to view the world and how to talk and how to listen to people talking so that like that it like makes all of the quippiness and the slickness like basically just like makes sense as far as like that's how he views the mm -hmm. world yeah. and like uh the girl he falls in love with like how her accent is so exaggerated and like all this yeah. like you know what i mean yeah the set design of like the the washing machines and everything so magical when they're together it's like this could literally just be like how he sees all these things happening or mm -hmm. meant to be like that point of like from his point of view and i never noticed that before i thought it was just a really slick movie um but this i i don't know if they were going for that but the fact that i kind of like realized that just made me love it even more yeah. regardless of whether they were going for that or not that's you know a good I mean? interpretation for sure um and I think the only line that they point out that mm -hmm. he says from movie is that Monsters Inc. line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's that's, that's the one that I noticed when they took him back, when Kevin Spacey took him back to his uh, apartment. I feel like there must have been more than just that. I'm sure there was. Like, how is that working out for you? That probably was somewhere in there. You know what yeah. I mean? And then I don't remember the others, but yeah, that was super cool. It just... It was like, it already was just a cool, slick movie. And it's like, oh, maybe all of that also had uh, a, uh, an another reason for being there other than just being a cool movie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was enough. I loved the movie already <laughs> yeah. just from it being a cool movie. Right. But even if that all of that was just to serve kind of like uh, the story better of like telling the story of this child in this world, like then it's even cooler. Yeah. You know? The humor was very good too. Um like with so the whole, um, like the Mike Myers mask. Yeah. That's that funny. was in the trailer and I laughed at that and I was like, oh, this is going to be a funny movie. But that was hilarious. Jamie Foxx uh, in general was really funny. Yeah. Um, Kevin Spacey had some good lines. Oh yeah. When he was like talking to, uh, his character was talking to Bats and was uh, explaining baby's backstory and he's like, wow, I just drew a hole, <laughs> uh, what do you say? Like, I just drew a whole map in the time it took me to explain yeah, that. That's very right. impressive, yeah. right? Yeah. Shop. Let's talk it. <laughs> uh, his nephew. Oh, was, yeah. That's hilarious. That one is funny. Um, I mean, whenever Bats is like um, talking about how Baby didn't hear anything in the, of their highest. And yeah. And he takes the earbuds out and he explains everything mm -hmm. in perfect detail. Dude, Jamie Foxx's performance he was so good. He was so scary at all times. Yeah, he was intense. He was so yeah, he was so intense. And him and John Hamm, like it was yeah, it was scary when they were together in a scene. And oh my gosh. Did you notice like all the times when there was like a song playing while there were shootouts and how the guns were timed with like the song? Yeah. I loved that so much. And um I only noticed it um like it happens like every time yeah it, it's really putting your face on the second highest whenever they're about to get out of the car and yeah. baby's like wait, wait wait i have to replay the song so that everything's in time oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 then yeah um i i had noticed it then i didn't notice it the uh uh the I time when bats had just died and they were like and and his wife had just died, John. Yeah. Like she died, and then when he was retaliating at the police, it was also in time. I'm like, this is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> After that, I, I feel like it's really, it's really noticeable um, at the the arms deal shootout. Yes, that one. Yeah, that that one felt the coolest because there were like so many machine guns and there were lots of triplet timings. And, yeah. Yeah. Tequila. Yeah, that's that scene was awesome. 
Dude, oh my gosh. That scene reminded me of another movie. Have you seen it? Free Fire? No. I don't even know. I heard of that. I love that movie. You haven't heard Who's it? Who's in it? Brie Larson. Uh, no, I don't think I know what you're Coppola. What's his name from Chappie? Oh, I don't and know. District 9. I can't remember his name. Hmm. He's got a weird name. No, but no. Uh, so that's him. It's Brie Larson. Uh, I think some guy from the office. It's and um, ah, what's his name? What's his name? The Lone Ranger. Oh, Army Hammer. Army Hammer. Yeah, <laughs> he's so weird. Yeah. Any movie I've seen him in, except for the Lone Ranger, he just is like, he's a really good actor. But yeah, he's just yeah, so goofy. He's pretty good in that. Yeah, uh, in Free Fire. But that scene, um, where they were getting the guns. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that situation for an entire movie. Oh, nice. It is so funny. That's cool. It is so cool. Yeah, that's a good movie. Oh, my gosh. In the, oh, in the intro of Baby Driver, Bravo. Right. Um, that that shot, oh, that shot when um, they're in the, like the semis are like just backing out and they're doing the whip uh, through them. Baby's like, yeah. They're down the what is that called? Like, like the freeway? No, before that. It's it's in the chase and they're down like kind of like a corridor, like a hall. Um, and he's like whipping past these semis that are like backing out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The, down like the, the alley. One, yeah. The alley. That's oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> remember what freaking alley it was called. <laughs> it's like a corridor. I was like, were they in a building? No, no, no. No, it was No, yeah. I yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. That, that shot is like real. It's oh, practical. Really? Yeah. I I figured a lot of the stunt driving was practical. Yeah. A lot of it was really impressive. Yeah. But like that scene, the first time I saw it, I was like, there is no way. That looks it's too smooth. It's way too dangerous. I'm like, there's no way. And then I like, uh, I, I watched like behind the scenes of it. And like, it was, I was like, it was real. And like that just like it, every time I see it now, I just like tense up. Like it is so terrifying no. that like someone did that. Um, Dude. whenever he's in that, that first chase when they go uh-huh. under the, the highway with the other two red cars, yeah. he like, goes around and like breaks to switch positions yeah so that yeah. that was tense yeah because there's oh uh, like, yeah yeah, yeah. like other people there then he yeah or uh in the second the second chase when the the military guy is chasing after them and he oh, like yeah. rams him underneath the yeah yeah wheeler and he's like pushing out yeah that yeah. was a great thing dude yeah all of the all the chases, all all of the driving, all those scenes just felt so good. Like for me, uh-huh. when it comes to cars and yeah. chase scenes, they're either hit or miss with me. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, this, I could care less. Yeah, about yeah, a yeah. Chase yeah. Scene. And then sometimes I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah, exactly. I feel the exact same way where a lot of action movies I watch, I'd say the majority of the time I feel like nothing. Like watching like a car chase or just, you know yeah. what I mean? Anything like that. Just because it's, it's, I, I cannot imagine the stress and the amount of work that goes into trying to capture that, like, yeah. you know what I mean, in the shoot. So, like, it makes sense that they kind of just, like, get some wobbly shots and, like, all right, let's just stick together and move on to something that we yeah. can, like, actually do in a safe way. But um, whenever it's done well, it's sometimes, like, just the most exciting part of, like, the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like... Um, that movie does it really well. Uh, the Batman and Penguin chase and the Batman is a really good. Yeah, that one feels really pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything to do with them interacting with each other as well feels really good, especially because it's like raining. That just like is so yeah. scary. Um, <laughs> a movie series I'm interested in watching now for that reason is actually Fast and the Furious. Uh, I have just zero interest in watching. I haven't <laughs> seen <laughs> any of them. I I want to first off like see what all the hype is about. So yeah. many people love it. Yeah. And then, uh, but also I want to see like I haven't seen a lot of really good car action scenes or car chases. So like. I don't know, maybe this is what the movie's all about. Maybe some of them are good. I'm sure the majority are going to not be good. Mm -hmm. 
uh, since there's just so many, and since know, they go in so many different directions, more than anything is just just the amount. Yeah, like man, like they're about to come out with the tenth one. Why are they still doing it? I don't know. Like, yeah, that's how I am though. It's like even TV shows. Like if the TV show has like a lot of seasons, yeah, or a lot of episodes per season, I'm like, ah, tch, I'm not gonna watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, that might be a, a series we go into. <laughs> cool yeah anything anything else you notice about baby driver every dude everyone in that movie was so good i love the poster also like that's definitely a poster i would probably oh, want at one yeah point. no i love it the, I, the well, color, so actually the color design of the whole movie was so awesome yeah i loved it it's got a lot of good colors yeah um actually when i was figuring out what to, extra posters we we're gonna have because i only yeah. had the Star Wars one over there and the Hollywood one. Yeah. Um, I did want the Baby Driver one, but I was like, I haven't seen it. Mm. I feel weird about that. Because I have a... Like, I would feel weird about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like people that get posters for movies uh, that they haven't seen. You it's kind of like you're one of the one of the people who wear like, like a band Nirvana. Shirts. Yeah, like yeah, a Nirvana yeah. Pink Floyd shirt and they yeah. haven't listened to a single song. Like yeah, I yeah. know... Or know of several people that have this poster, yeah, and they've never seen this movie, or have like a Pulp Fiction poster. <sighs> it's a great poster. Yeah, it's also a great movie. So like, yeah. that's why I have it. It's because I like the movie. Yeah, and I didn't want a Pulp Fiction poster because, <sighs> come on, everyone has a Pulp Fiction <sighs> poster. <laughs> it just feels so. I'm so torn because Pulp Fiction is so massive in pop culture mm -hmm. that like. If if you could get away with any of them, it's like Star Wars and like Pulp Fiction's up there as far as like movies that like even if you haven't seen, even if you like movies, it's like you know it's a good movie and the and yeah. it looks good. I mean, it, it's a great looking poster, so it like fits in with everything else you have. You're talking about the Uma Thurman one, right? Or what, what yeah. Pulp Fiction poster are you talking about? Uh, any of them? Any of the ones I've seen yeah. look really good. The Uma Thurman one looks really good. The one uh, that's kind of like just the the color silhouettes of. Uh, the two characters. Oh yeah, what are their names? Jules and what's his name? I cannot remember his name. Wow. Come on, dude. There's no. Oh, hang on. His, his name is said so <laughs> many wait. times. I'm just struggling to remember John Travolta. John Travolta. John yeah. Travolta's character. Yeah, I forget what his name is. It's Jules and Fives. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, there's one with like them. Mm -hmm. their guns drawn and it's yeah. like the the harsh like uh, uh yellow and black like yeah. that one looks really good but uh, yeah so yeah, just no. as a general rule if you're gonna have a poster you're gonna wear the shirt you probably you should, should know something about it. you should already have listened or watched the thing at least once yeah now i mean i'll probably get that baby driver poster and oh then, yeah oh man there's this really cool 2049 poster where there's like there's no i mean i, I like this text here uh -huh. this text is cool yeah i like the summer 2008 of the mama mia one yeah um but there's a blade runner 2049 mm -hmm. that's just um a, it's like a it's a it, it's from the movie but it was also yeah. a promotional picture but there's no text on it and it's mm -hmm. just like him standing amongst like the desert with like a bunch of yellow and it's it's just a really aesthetically pleasing poster and it, yeah it, I know. that doesn't I think, sound familiar I like i like it better it. than like the cover that's art like right the there. only one i've only i've yeah. ever seen of it so unfortunately that's like a really crappy poster yeah i'll have to show you a picture once we're done here it's a yeah poster. yeah the colors are too harsh on it i like my la la land one a lot because yeah it's so different it's I've never not seen one like it. the one of them at the lamppost <laughs> yeah which is everywhere that and that's a great poster it is but it's just i've never seen that one anywhere so i like that one a lot and i also like my star wars one because it's not the shirtless luke that you never see in the movie you know of him holding it yeah that, it's not that one yeah yeah, yeah. the iconic one the yeah. i mean yeah, he's one of still, the most iconic posters period he's still on that poster in that pose but that's yeah. not the whole poster yeah, I, I like it better too. Oh my gosh. Um, cool. So, so Baby Driver's done. Baby Driver was sick. 
highly rec- recommend. Oh, and yeah. definitely like probably in my probably in my top ten now. I really liked it. I think it might be in there for me too. It might be in my top ten. It's it's, it's on the uh, other end. It's yeah, not in the no, top five area. No, definitely not top five. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Top ten, maybe top fifteen. Yeah, the menu. That's like in my top fifty. It's a pretty good 50. movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty I, I said, good. I liked it more than I thought I would. You know what? And I was very surprised. It had nothing to do with cannibalism. Yeah, or even like, the concept of like eating the rich. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that, no, yeah. I thought it was that. gonna be more like that. Yeah. I, I liked. That surprise I liked a lot. Yeah, I was I, like, I love the premise of it. It's like that's so what turned more. me off from seeing it in theaters, because I was going to mm-hmm. see it in theaters, and I was yeah. like, oh, it's on HBO Max. I'll just see that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, because I just thought it was going to be like, um, you know, there's like so many cannibal movies right now, like Fresh <laughs> with like uh, Sebastian Stan. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, yeah. I forget what it's called, but the one with Timothy Chalamet, uh, Bones and All, I think is what's called. Um, so I haven't even heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was just like, oh, great, you know, another yeah. freaking cannibal movie, weird cannibal movie, lovely. But I wanted to see it because of what a lovely day, Ralph, Phineas, Phineas, yeah, Fines, Phineas. I don't know how you say it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another one, Anya Taylor Joy, or is it Anna? I've been saying Anna Taylor Joy this whole time, but I have no idea. I forget if I'm the right correct or pronunciation. Wrong. She was awesome. She was really yeah, good. She was really good. She was really good. Everyone was nah. I like Ralph Phineas, <clears throat> Anna Toy Jailer. Toy? Joy Taylor. Taylor Joy. I said Toy Jailer. Toy Jailer. <laughs> toy. Uh, um, they were awesome. All of the uh, all of the chefs. Uh, yeah. they were all pretty in in sync with each other and they were really good. Um, I'd say, I mean, I, I was surprised by how I, I did like the movie. It, it was good. Um, yeah. But I think that's also because I was, I didn't really know what, I, I didn't have any expectations. At mm-hmm. all. Yeah. I didn't even know if I was going to finish it. I was like, I'm just going to start this. Yeah. Just kind of putting it on. The, and I was like, wow, there. I, I really like the way it's stylized mm-hmm. and, um, the the satire of it i love satire. yeah 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 i love yeah i liked it a lot a, a few things were pretty like by the numbers predictable as far as like what they were saying and all that and yeah. that was fine but there were but the, it just had these moments that i was like oh i really like this yeah but it came and went it wasn't yeah. the whole movie i wish it was the whole movie i i, I totally understand what you're saying there like i really like the the tortillas uh, yes, he was calling everyone out. With I love that. Teams. That was hilarious. All, all, all of the, I'd say every course was pretty. It was pretty good. I liked yeah. it. I love the insertions of like a break from like the pacing of the movie where they like literally show the ingredients or like the description of the yeah, menu and the picture. Like a joke in there. Yeah, that was funny. That uh, was, that was one of the moments where I'm like, this is. A, I like this movie. Yeah, and then like it kind of got back into the weeds of whatever the heck else it was trying to be. It felt like yeah, kind of torn between like are some we going to be like full blown comedic satire? Yes. Are we actually going to try and be a say horror something? thriller? Yeah. 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 It was. It was. I felt like it. Um. It was kind of just trying to be both, and it's not that I wish it committed to one or the other. It's just I wish it leaned into one more or the other. So I kind of knew how to feel the whole time i guess right you know what i mean yeah because it's like wow this is satire this is funny it's very Uh, good and then like the sous chef blows his brains out and you're like oh crap okay yeah yeah it's like okay i guess i'm gonna pay attention now like more than just laugh like hold on yeah and then the ending yeah was just so weird like it's it's pretty i knew she was gonna get out somehow but like i i think i don't really get what the point of like obvious I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. I, I think I love it. I actually really liked it though. I, I it's such a weird feeling. She beat him, you know. For yeah. Sure. I don't get it, but I liked it. Mm-hmm. That's like a weird feeling. I don't usually feel that with movies, but it's like I really it was such a good scene. I loved her 
ordering and the fact that she saw him like flipping burgers in a picture before mm -hmm. and like his reactions to it was so weird and visceral yeah. like i feel like i'm missing something with like yeah. what they're saying with it because like i liked it but i'm like i do not get it <laughs> i don't get why the other people yeah. didn't start freaking out and going i want a burger please get me yeah, a burger like, like because yeah. they saw her get away yeah. they like just accepted it yeah it was yeah the movie was weird yeah, it's super, super strange. Um, so what's worth the main watching. Guy, the uh, Thomas was was that his name or is it something else? Her date. That's oh yeah, dude. I loved he his was... performance and his whole character. Yeah, I, I think it was Thomas. Like he um, was, he was so interesting. I like that he starts out being just like an like a pretty decent guy. Yeah, I thought it was gonna the the role that her character was going through. I thought they were gonna be in it together. Yeah. Especially with the poster. It's them and against Ralph Phineas. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I yeah. thought it was going to be them together in on this. But no. he's, he's, <laughs> he's he's actually... Like every course he, he distanced himself more and more from her. Yeah. Just, and, just becomes a jerk. And he's like more like all of the the cultish like followers than any of the other... It's like there's the rich people, there's yeah. the common people, and then there's like the cult people. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas's character was the cult people. Like, yeah. I didn't see that coming. I was like, what the heck? All right. <laughs> and when he, <laughs> when he goes to kill himself. Dude, that scene was crazy. I love that. That scene was really tense. It was so tense. Like, Ralph he's having to make was his own so dish. tense. Because yeah. he was so... He was so all over the place. Yeah. I like how it felt kind of like, kind of weird and cobbled together and unsure, but also like deathly serious like at the same time yeah like his performance and also just what was happening because like that's something i loved how like things didn't always go exactly as planned with like certain things mm -hmm. happening and how that would like really how, upset him yeah and like how everyone reacted to that like her being there like just ru ruined a lot of things and they had to like basically like improvise their whole plan for yeah. their big suicide or whatever like <laughs> Um, what do you think you whispered in Thomas's ear? That's honestly it's like Thomas was just him. so, uh, he was so going to listen to whatever he said. It doesn't even matter. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, it doesn't matter. I, yeah, but there's like this, um, I don't know how I got on this. Uh huh. There's this debate about what he said. Uh huh. Uh, some people think he insulted him. Yeah. So bad that it just made him want to kill himself. Yeah. I think he just, I think he told him to kill himself. Oh, I think he told him for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's what I got from it. Absolutely. I think Which he I think told him just after awesome. he just humiliated him. Yeah, like, you know now kill I mean? yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Um, I don't know how he said it or like, basically I'm saying that Thomas's character was hanging on his every like breath. So like. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, he, he. Thomas knew he was going to die when he when he got there, right? Exactly. So he didn't yeah, yeah, get yeah. to be a part of that grand death, right? Oh. So he, that's why it hit him so hard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I got you're you. going to kill yourself before we all kill ourselves. Yeah, you're, you're not, not going to be... You're not going to be, you're not gonna be covered the, in chocolate and... Be a part of the big or, burning at the end. Yeah. You don't even get that honor because you're so worthless and pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like a blind follower. You know? Yeah. So... I, was, I like how I wish they went a little more into it because it was kind of like Saw where they all had wronged him in some way or were insulting yeah. him in some way. I wish yeah. they went a little more into that because that was like the most interesting part for me. Really? It was like why they were all there. Interesting. Because like, I didn't really think about that that much. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I was mostly interested in how he would interact with her character since mm -hmm. it everything kind of changed for both of them yeah like she wasn't supposed to be there yeah i was mostly focused on her and him and how they would interact and how she would get out of this and i only watched it once so like yeah her being an escort was a good twist i wasn't expecting that being an escort you mean yeah you mean the older guy uh no uh Anya Taylor Joy being an escort to Thomas, like uh -huh. I thought they were like a couple. I didn't realize that. She oh, was, uh, an escort. Oh, I didn't even realize that either. Yeah, that yeah that scene in his office where he's like, we're both like in the service industry. 
Uh, like oh, oh, gotcha, 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 yeah. I was kind of thinking, whenever they revealed that, I was kind of thinking that Thomas told his actual girlfriend just to like stay home and he just went and got like a prostitute to That's what I thought. be there. At and first. Then, yeah, I because think that of her been, honestly, past with the better. other... Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, did I misread? Okay, no. I was like, did I misread that? Um, okay. And the but then they're like... That guy's no. finger cut off? <laughs> yeah. That was funny. And then he just said that his girlfriend just broke up with him and he had to get a last minute date. Yeah. I like it better than if he just told her to stay home and he just got some random woman to die. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's what I thought it was, basically. <sighs> so. I, <laughs> the freaking. So weird. Um, corporate guys, the, the, the trio that were like embezzling. Yeah. Money. They were kind of stupid. but They were stupid. I, I, I really. Like they, were, they played their part well. Yeah, I really liked. They were like the three guys from Joker on the subway, you know, just kind of thinking they're better for, than everyone else. Yeah. I really liked, yeah. I really liked their interactions with, uh, what was she? Was she the sous chef? What was she? Oh, like, uh, um, the people. I think she was like a host. The host. She was awesome. She was in the whale. That was the nurse. You're lying. I'm not. <laughs> what? Yeah. I did not recognize her at all. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I did not recognize her at all. That's crazy. No. Yeah. Well, she's she's really good. She was really good at both. Yeah. She was awesome in the menu. Uh, yeah, I loved her interactions with those three probably more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. That I liked that a lot. Dude, another like really uncomfortable scene was when uh, their boss and then the guy that funds the island was just like they his death where he's like hanging. Yeah. That was really uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable <laughs> and it was ambiguous. Yeah. Like, how did he die? Like, were there piranhas in there? Like, what the? Or did he just drown? I don't or know. drown? Or like, yeah, I was, I thought he was going to get set on fire. But they were like, oh, no, we're saving that <laughs> no, <laughs> for later. Yeah. That would, that's yeah. his death. He can't have the same death. Yeah. 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 Dude. Yeah. That movie was so weird. Yeah. I, I, I liked it. Maybe on more, I feel like, I feel like I'm just like all over the place. And like on more watch throughs, I think I will settle into either liking it or not liking it. Because mm -hmm. I've got, both of those like so I, see, it's I, so purple right now it's not like i like it or don't like it you know what i mean it's so like what yeah. i just have feelings about it i guess i think the more i watch it mm -hmm. like i I like it uh -huh. i think i'll either like it a lot more or just yeah my feelings on it won't change yeah interesting i i know mine are gonna change because i have I think if it, I think the reason why I can't not like it, yeah, is because it's not taking itself seriously anyway. So like yeah. the stuff that, yeah, I'd be like what? That's, that's stupid. I that's think, true. I think those are intentional. Yeah. So if it was taking itself seriously, you know, it's supposed to be an actual horror. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would hate it. That's the a, fact that that's it's a really like, good point. Yeah, the fact that it is self-aware, I, I. I can't not like that. Yeah. I think that's why I like the ending so much. It is so funny and yeah. weird yeah. that she does that and it works. Mm -hmm. And it's, and then like the ending where like, the, it's just so silly. The fact that they burn and then she's just there and she chomps and it ends. I'm like, this is a she funny like, movie. She wipes her mouth with the menu. You know, just, yeah. Wipes her mouth with the menu. It's yeah. Abrupt ending. I was like, what is this? Sure. <laughs> what is this uh, movie yeah i i think the less and less i take it seriously the more and more i'm just gonna really like the movie actually and I, I think that's the way you're supposed to interpret it yeah i think people that read into it too much mm -hmm. it becomes a weaker movie because yeah. it's not trying to do that yeah it's it's kind of trying to do a little bit of both it's it's just a movie it's kind of a fun time it's like it, yeah it's, it's just know? a watch it's a watch yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an enjoyable and watch i think those are really important i i think it's uh something i'm really excited to see as far as like myself like with this podcast is like uh which way i lean towards do mm -hmm. i read in too much or do i not read enough as far as e examining movies because both of those have their advantages and disadvantages yeah. like you know reading too little it's like you can miss some of the best parts of certain movies and like kind of like the deeper meanings behind them I don't want to do that, but I also don't want to just become like, 
I don't know, someone who's like, mm, actually, what this means, and like yeah. always overread into things yeah. and not be able to enjoy a movie. That's just a movie. You know what I mean? And I think I'm doing that maybe with the menu. And I see, might be caring too much. Yeah. Looking too hard, you know? If you get those feelings, I think I always like to read like what the director is actually trying to, what they thought of it, what they were feeling about it. Yeah. Or the writer. Yeah. Um, and I think that could help. Yeah. Like if you're like purple, like like what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think understanding the production of it can help sway. Like if yeah. like if the menu writer was like, no, this is like my this is like my my biggest challenge. This is my art. This is something that like needs to be taken seriously. It yeah. needs to really be re- read into to understand yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on. I'd yeah. hate it. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I'd hate it or not, but it's like it, but then I would know whether I should read in more or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that it's pushed so heavily is like this is a satire. Yeah, please don't take this seriously. It's like oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This One is funny. Uh, I watched a video recently, and someone said something as far as like uh, like examining movies or whatnot. Like a good kind of rule of thumb is just like give the the all the creators and all the artists involved like kind of the benefit of the doubt Mm -hmm. and it's like kind of just on at least your first few watch throughs and like the first few times you're observing like just give them the benefit of the doubt and just kind of assume that everything that happens or the way things happen intentionally happen Mm -hmm. and try and understand that yeah and i think that's i think i went in with like that headspace and maybe but um that not every artist and not every uh creative like does do everything intentionally and also just the constraints of like the medium and like time and uh the pressure from investors and whatnot it's like some some things that are uh looked at in film uh are kind of just happy accidents yeah Uh, you know what i mean like a a lot of the best moments that that no one saw yes or no one wanted to be seen Mm -hmm. in their movie right so it's like uh and like some of the most memorable moments are just like uh, improvised things or it's like they had, they like wanted to do one thing and they couldn't do it. So they just settled for this. Mm-hmm. But then everyone just like loves that the most. One of my like favorite instances of that is uh-huh. like also one of the most famous where it's where um, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yep. Yeah. When they're supposed to have that big sword fight yep. or whatever, but Harrison Ford was sick. So they're like, just shoot him. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I don't, I don't, it's like kind of a legend now at this point. So I don't know how it actually happened, but the way I heard it was that they had the the thing and they shot it a few times, but like Harrison Ford was sick. And so he did that as a joke. Mm, And then they were like, that's really funny. We're going to throw out all the choreography and we're just going to actually give you a blank and do that now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Exactly. Like that moment was just, it's so iconic now, but it's, it's just something funny. That, that happened. happened on set, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, all that to say, uh, I just want to make sure I don't go too much one or the other way. Mm-hmm. just want to try and be as... And that's why I think it's good that we're, like, um, last week we watched some pretty heavy stylized movies that did have a lot to say. Or, yeah. Uh, and then I think it's good to throw in things like like the menu. Every once in a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like, um, like my original suggestion for you was Bullet Train. Yeah. Which I feel like is still good. And I think mm-hmm. you probably should watch that next week. Yeah. Because I think you'll have some of the same feelings about like, I don't know, you know, am, am I purple? Is is this a yeah, good yeah, movie? Yeah. Is it not a good movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's another movie that's just, just supposed to be a, just an enjoyable ride just to watch yeah and that that's totally fine yeah i think i think those movies are important oh yeah to distinguish from other movies i think i don't think that as far as like good and bad movies as far as like i think a movie's kind of good or bad based on like what kind of movie it was trying to be and whether Mm -hmm. it did that well right you know what i mean but as far as like the different genres or the different styles of movies. I don't think there's any styles or genres that are good or bad. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. because I think all of them serve a particular purpose. And so, you know, like the people who like hate on Marvel movies, it's mm-hmm. like, okay. Like yeah. there's a lot of like e- economic and like whatnot reasons. And as far as like the whole idea of 
basically the way Hollywood and the way film industry looks now is there's indie films and there's blockbusters and that's yeah. it. And that's really sad because a lot of the most memorable movies in like the last like 50 years are those in between mid budget movies. You know what I mean? Right. And those are getting less of a shot to have a chance to be successful because they don't seem as uh safe as a big blockbuster movie or they don't seem as like kind of cool and viral as like an indie art house kind of movie. Yeah. Um and I I definitely agree that I don't like that. I I want all three to be there because uh uh those in between movies is like where a lot of movies that people love were made especially like 20 years ago the right. 80s and the 90s that's where like the bulk of like the cool movies were made from um like i the only one of like recent memory that i could see being like really successful is like crazy rich agents where it had like a pretty modest budget like yeah. in between but it it got it, it had its chance and it became huge like yeah. 200 million dollar box off yeah crazy cool. rich asian is a good movie i haven't seen it i really want to see it oh, i didn't haven't? know aquafina was in it oh yeah oh my gosh i want to see it yeah it's um it's based on a book series that really yeah oh my gosh i really want to see that nice all right so next episode we got lighthouse and Goodwill hunting. Goodwill hunting. That'll be good. Now, those are two very heavy movies with lots to read into. Yeah. Yeah, both of them are in a lot of Oh my gosh. I'm excited for that episode. That'll be cool. Yeah. Cool. Whenever that gets filmed next week. <laughs> week after. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows 5 months from now. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't need to change clothes in between. <laughs> oh, we did that <laughs> thing.